In the 60s, a woman exposed the chemical industry for a murder. In response, they destroyed her entire career. Eventually, though, the truth came out, and she was right all along. From the doctor who changed the NFL forever, to a scientist that was beaten half to death for his life-saving work, I'm Mike with List25, and here are 25 historical figures who were called crazy, but proven right. Marcello Mappighi, an Italian physicist, was physically beaten after he had a fascinating thought. His work helped piece together a picture of how blood circulated throughout the body, using capillaries that connected arteries and veins. Unfortunately for him, his theories challenged established knowledge. And one day, while on campus at his university, two masked men hunted him down and attacked him. His house was also burned down, which many suspect was yet another attack. And who said academics were civilized? Kotoku Omura enjoyed waves of support as mayor of the Japanese town of Fudai. He was even elected to office 10 times in a row. But in 1967, when he commissioned a massive seawall in front of the fishing port, his popularity sank. They saw it as a waste of money. The public only recognized his brilliance in 2011 when a gigantic tsunami hit Japan, killing almost 20,000 people and doing billions of dollars in damage. But in Fudai, there was only one life lost, and all the buildings remained intact. A man truly ahead of his time. Geochemist Claire Patterson's career revolved around lead. He helped create lead dating, and was even the one to help date Earth to 4.55 billion years using a meteorite. However, his research also led to some controversy. Once he discovered how dangerous lead was, he started speaking out against big companies using it in virtually every product they could, from paint and gasoline to batteries and even some kitchenware. In 1970, he finally succeeded. The Clean Air Act was passed, and within the next decade, most lead had been removed from products. In 2002, while performing an autopsy of a former football player, Dr. Bennett Omalu discovered chronic traumatic encephalopathy in the brain, better known as CTE, a brain disease developed after repeated head injuries. At the time, the NFL refused to accept any link. In fact, it went on the attack, publishing questionable research of its own, demanding that Dr. Omalu pull the publication and kicking him out of any discussions on the issue. But the evidence was overwhelming. And now, there's even a movie, Dr. Omalu, starring Will Smith. Not many doctors can say that. Ever heard of the Atkins diet? Two decades ago, it was all the rage. And it all started with Dr. Robert C. Atkins. The diet laid out a fairly simple way to achieve weight loss. Low carbs, very little sugar, and more protein over four different phases. Unlike plenty of other diets, the calculation was pretty straightforward too carbs minus fiber content. And the biggest plus? No need to spend hours at the gym exercising. Dr. Atkins made his diet famous through a book that sold over 10 million copies. The backlash was strong, with many arguing that the diet was restrictive, ineffective, or even downright dangerous. However, while it is not for everyone, the Atkins diet has now proven to be effective for many people. Down on a cellular level, biological evolution is a hotly contested topic. That's why when Lynn Margulis proposed something radically different, she was shunned by the scientific world. In a nutshell, her idea was that certain cells work in harmony with smaller cells to evolve into things like mitochondria. Her theory involves eukaryotic cells, prokaryotic cells, and chloroplasts. But do not ask me to get any more specific. Anyway, the point is that Lynn Margulis's theory was rejected by over a dozen academic journals. Then, later evidence confirmed her theory. By 1995, it was being described by one of her biggest opponents as, quote, one of the great achievements of 20th century evolutionary biology. Take that, establishment. <laughs> Tom Cruise in Top Gun? Being an Air Force pilot is undoubtedly one of the coolest jobs to have. But did you know that in the early 20th century, the Air Force didn't exist? Leaders inside the U.S. military didn't believe that air power was as effective as tanks, soldiers, and battleships. The man who broke that barrier was General William Mitchell. During World War I, in 1917, he was put in charge of thousands of airplanes and totally pummeled the German military on the ground below. From then on, General Mitchell gunned for a new department of the military to be created, the Air Force. This didn't make him many friends. 
but eventually in 1947, the Air Force was officially detached from the Army Signal Corps. Sadly, General Mitchell had been dead for 11 years. In the 20s, aircraft were already reaching tens of thousands of feet, but a bold engineer, Robert Goddard, had much higher aspirations. In 1926, he debuted the very first liquid-fueled rocket in history. That first test only made it 41 feet into the air, but it built the foundations for space travel, and Goddard told the government there would definitely be a space race in the future. Higher-ups in the U.S. government weren't convinced, and neither was the media. But after landing a man on the moon, it's clear who was right. 100 years ago, there weren't many protections on food. The dangers of contaminated food was still not fully understood, and that meant anyone speaking out against industries became a target. No one more than Alice Evans, a microbiologist working at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Her expertise? Milk. Her research led her to a startling conclusion, that humans could get sick from a bacterium in cow's milk. Her solution? To pasteurize it. In other words, heat it to kill bacteria. No one believed her. But after years of showing evidence after evidence, the results couldn't be ignored. This was a huge, expensive blow to the dairy industry, but a big win for public health. This one is definitely the most extreme on the list so far. Not only was this guy flat out dismissed for his ideas, his ideas were fiery. Literally. How did it all start? Well, you may have heard of the infinite universe theory. It sits alongside multiverse and string theory as one of those concepts that completely warps the brain. Now imagine people back in the 16th century hearing about this idea. An Italian academic, Giordano Bruno, was convinced of an infinite universe. The problem was that it went against the position of society's most powerful institution, the church. Giordano refused to go back on these beliefs, and he paid the price. In 1600, he was burned alive. When the breakthrough came from the Wright brothers and machines could glide through the skies, it was no doubt a monumental achievement. But not everyone was impressed. Many of the first flights didn't appear in the media. And so when the Wright brothers wrote to the U.S. Army to secure rights to the airplane, a rejection came back, demanding more proof. Within a couple of years, though, the U.S. Army had been convinced, partly because interest was growing in France and Britain. Nothing like a little competition to push a decision. Real fun fact, the first commercial airline uh, happened not that far from where I'm standing now. It was a plane, it was a little commercial airline, it took one person, it was from uh, St. Pete to Tampa. You might have noticed that there are quite a few women on this list who have been overlooked. And here's another nobody should have doubted, Barbara McClintock. She had a Master of Science and a PhD from Cornell. She had quickly risen in the field of genetics, however... When she made the shocking discovery that genes could jump around different parts of a chromosome, her entire reputation was attacked. Knowing that she was treading on sensitive ground, Barbara took a step back from academia and started publishing. It turns out, she was right. And later, she won the Nobel Prize. This is why we should listen to women more. Desperate times can lead to great discoveries. And when Eric the Red, a Viking, was kicked out of Iceland for manslaughter, he was desperate. But what to do with the seafaring skills of a Viking, a ship, and nothing but time on your hands? How about finding a new land to conquer? Through his adventures, Eric came across Greenland in the year 982 and built a home for himself. But he also invited his Viking countrymen, after his exile had expired, of course. And soon, there were thousands of people living and working on the island. Working in the 19th century, Ignaz Semmelweis came up with the radical idea that infections could be avoided by washing your hands. Believe it or not, at the time, this was controversial. Like others on this list, society just wasn't quite ready for a change. Semmelweis could see the link between hand washing and reduced mortality, but he didn't yet have a comprehensive theory to back it up. And after years of mockery, he had a mental breakdown and was thrown into an asylum. In the asylum, he was physically assaulted by guards and died soon after, never living to see his ideas develop into germ theory. Just like Marcello Mabigliu kicked off our list, another big name in the area of blood was William Harvey, but his research came decades before. His contribution was working out that blood circulated throughout the body in a massive loop, and that the heart was the thing pumping it all. 
Unfortunately, like Marcello after him, this wasn't in line with what scientists had agreed upon. Instead of questioning themselves, they simply ignored it. Not always for scientific reasons, but also religious and philosophical justifications. Now, his name is remembered as an important stepping stone to understanding the human body. How far would you go to prove yourself right? Well, when physician Dr. Barry Marshall wanted to figure out the cause of stomach ulcers, he pulled out all the stops. It was the 80s, and conventional wisdom said that peptic ulcers came from stress, too much gastric acid, or maybe even spicy food. But through a study of 100 patients, Dr. Marshall discovered that it was actually a bacterium called Heliobacter pylori. The medical community wouldn't budge on their views, and so Barry went to extreme lengths. He drank some Heliobacter pylori himself, and sure enough, he got gastritis, which often leads to stomach ulcers. Don't worry, he took medicine and was fine. And for his work in 2005, he won a Nobel Prize. How did Jon Snow try to save millions? And no, I'm not talking about Game of Thrones. I'm talking about a man who tried to stop an epidemic. In the 1800s, unsanitary European cities were being devastated by diseases. The biggest was cholera. Enter Jon Snow, an English physician who first suggested that it wasn't being spread through the air, but through the water. At first, the English medical community and politicians didn't listen. But once they finally took his idea on board, they were able to isolate which water pumps were infected and shut them off. Unsurprisingly, nothing major was done until Parliament was directly affected during the Great Stink of 1858, which is exactly what it sounds like. You know what a surgeon's room looks like. White everywhere, clean scrubs, gloves, and sanitizer at every turn. But it wasn't always like that. Once upon a time, in a faraway land before the 19th century, surgeons rocked up to work in normal clothes, tried to get the operation done as quickly as possible, and then got out of there. They didn't even wash their hands. That was until Joseph Lister came along and proposed a new protocol, using antiseptics. Surgeons of the time dismissed Joseph's theory. According to them, introducing these new protocols would slow everything down and people would die. Fortunately, the evidence was in Joseph's favor, and within a few years of using them, the death rate of surgical patients had dropped to just 15%, and before that, the rate was 45. If you're like me, you treat psychics with a healthy dose of skepticism. But even I can't find an explanation for this case in the English city of Leicester. A woman by the name of Philippa Langley became utterly convinced that she had found the burial site of Richard III, the King of England who was killed in battle. That site happened to be a car park. And after Philippa convinced a documentary crew to follow her investigation, to everyone's surprise, they found a skeleton that matched the DNA of Richard III. We all know about the model of the solar system that orbits around the sun. It's the one we still use today. But while you might think of Galileo, there's actually a man who lived 1900 years before him who had the same idea. His name was Aristarchus of Samos. That's a powerful name. And it was matched by some great ideas. Through studying astronomy, it became clear to Aristarchus that the popular theory of the solar system was completely wrong. The center of the solar system was the sun, not the earth. And in fact, it wasn't until the 16th century, when Galileo came along, that poor old Aristarchus was finally proven right. There's a long time to wait for vindication. There are far worse enemies to have than the chemical industry. Last century, these were some of the biggest companies in America. They produced some of the most profitable materials like plastic and created chemicals used in brutal warfare. But one woman was willing to challenge Goliath, Rachel Carson. She was a marine biologist who became fascinated by the chemical dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane, better known as DDT, that was being used in World War II. It ultimately led to her publishing the book Silent Spring, which went into detail about the harmful effects of DDT on the environment. The chemical industry released its own reports attempting to refute her book and tried to have the book pulled before publication. They failed. And Carson is now remembered as the environmentalist champion she was. Imagine there's no money. Kind of sounds like a John Lennon lyric, but it was the tenet of Jacques Fresco's ideology. He was a retired Douglas Aircraft Company employee and military veteran. But what he made himself known for was his utopian vision of society. 
He believed a better system was possible, one that wasn't dependent on profit, but instead on sharing resources with everyone. And Fresco didn't just talk the talk, he bought up 21 acres of land here in Florida, constructing dome-shaped buildings that he imagined one day would make up an entire city. He called it the Venus Project. And although the utopian dream hasn't quite turned into a reality, his ideas of combating climate change, reducing inequality, and automating many parts of the economy are growing more and more popular with every day. Especially after years of a global pandemic, none of us need any introduction to the concept of germs. They spread anywhere and everywhere, but are invisible to the naked eye. However, less than 200 years ago, describing this tiny molecular world would have deemed you crazy. Case in point, Louis Pasteur. By the way, yes, it's from him that we get the word pasteurize. But back to the case at hand. Pasteur thought that bacteria were the thing that caused disease, something that was not popular at the time. Most scientists thought diseases spontaneously generated. Pasteur ignored the haters and used his theory to create vaccines for things like anthrax and rabies, helping to get the germ theory of disease accepted. Cancer is the trillion dollar problem in the medical world. About one in five people will develop it sometime in their lives. And so when the 19th century doctor William Coley was presented with a patient who had a gigantic tumor on their neck, he knew the outlook was bleak. Surgeons had already done five operations without success. But then, something miraculous happened. After having a severe skin infection, the tumor seemed to mysteriously disappear. And so Coley induced the same conditions for other patients, injecting them with the bacterium. And he found the same results. His peers were deeply suspicious. And Coley sounded like a quack. But he had actually laid the groundwork for immunotherapy that's still used today. So don't complain the next time you get a fever because it might just save your life. Today, there are seven continents here on Earth, but turn the clock back about 180 million years, and there'd be just one. This idea is a fairly new one. It was formalized by a geologist named Alfred Wegener in 1912. He even gave this single continent a new name, Pangaea, the Greek word for all of Earth. His fellow geologists didn't have the same respect for the idea. They widely dismissed it since there was little proof, but year after year, evidence grew. When the sea floor was investigated, the phenomenon of continental drift was uncovered and the pieces slowly clicked together. Wegener had finally been proven right decades after his death. Now, this isn't a test, but you know what? How about you try and guess the answer anyway? When was the first microscope made? A. 1924 B. 1590 C. 1871 or D. 1849 Oh, I'm sorry, are you still not satisfied? Well, how about I let you in on one more secret? Did you know there's a secret group of people who travel internationally to deliver a king's letter by hand? Or how about a secret network set up by Nathan Rothschild that earned his family hundreds of millions of dollars? Interested? Then click here to find out 25 of the world's best kept secrets. And as always, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell. I know I say all this every time, not kidding, helps the channel. That's how YouTube works. So please, if you could do all that for me, I would greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys next time.